Alright guys, it's your boy Ryan Thomas here with Failtech. Sorry for the audio video quality, uh, if it's any bad, any good, I'm not sure. I'm testing this out. Currently I've got my lavalier set up and I've got the GH4. Hopefully the video quality is good, but I'm not sure about the audio, I'm testing things out. Anyway, today I'm going to tell you really quickly about five ways you can increase your internet speed at home with absolutely no cost, although there might be some, but like most of this you can just do for free. What I meant to say is so you don't have to go out and buy another internet provider or you don't have to go out and change plans. Okay, so the first thing is if you're using a console or a desktop computer or even a laptop that has a gigabit ethernet port or anything with an ethernet port, I'd recommend you go wired over wireless every single time just because even if the download speed, even if you've got AC wireless and the download speed's very, very fast anyway on your wireless, it will improve latency a hell of a lot and it will lower your latency so if you're gaming it's going to make a huge difference. Also it usually does make a difference if you're just on download and upload speed because there can be interference depending where the wireless access point is in your house. Uh, it's better just to go with wide. Even if it looks ugly I would recommend you go wide because the experience is so much better. Okay, secondly is if you are on wired, hopefully you are, check all the ports are gigabit. So if your computer or Xbox or whatever or your, your console is gigabit, it usually is, uh, you want to check if your uh, switch or wireless access point, or sorry, rather router is gigabit as well. So the way to do this really is to check and it will say gig E. Uh, you can also do speed tests online and see. Basically, if you've got uh, an internet plan that is higher than 100 megabits per second and you're only getting, say, 80 or 90 megabits per second, it's probably because the port in your router or the port in your switch is only up to 100 megabits per second, which is quite common. And everything gigabit I would recommend switching to because then you're going to get the gigabit speeds. Obviously, you're not going to get gigabit internet unless you have that gigabit plan, but you are going to get significant increases in speed if your plan is above 100 megabits per second. Next, if you are on wireless and you have to, obviously your phones and tablets are on wireless as well as your laptops probably on wireless as well. You want to make sure you have AC, which is the newest standard. So if you're on a fiber plan, you really want uh, wireless AC, and this is quite common. If you've got the new BT Home Hub 5, or you've got some of the newer routers and access points that you've got from your ISP, they usually have AC built in. So it should be pretty, pretty good quality there. Uh, I've seen a dramatic difference with wireless N. I was getting about 80 megabits per second. And on wireless AC on my laptop, I actually got 180 megabits per second. So there is a huge difference. I am on a 210 megabit plan. So actually, you know, that's not just because I was on AC. I had that plan as well. But, you know, it's I get 210 wired. That's what I'm trying to say is. Wired is always going to be best, but AC, you can get close to the, the speeds that you get from wired. I think the actual like theoretical limit of AC is above a gigabit per second, so I mean it's very, very good. It's just about reliability, and the 5 gigahertz band usually is a bit mm, iffy. Next is if you're doing a lot of downloading and uploading, if you're making YouTube videos or you're downloading games, if you're doing uploads or downloads and stuff like that, like big games where you're uploading YouTube videos and you've got a slowish connection, you want to upload those and download those overnight because that's when no one else really in your house is using the internet. Hopefully, maybe if you're nocturnal, then you want to do it the other way around, but you know, you're not really doing things at night time and no one else is. So downloading, your speeds are going to be higher and uploading the same. You don't want to impede other people's uh, performance unless you're a bit greedy, but at the same time, you don't want to impede your own. So I would do that on, uh, overnight if you can. I mean, computers nowadays have got to the point where they're pretty efficient and you don't really need to actually like you can comfortably leave them overnight without you know loads of power loss and stuff and finally if you've got really bad broadband in your area but you can get 4g close your broadband close your package cancel your package go over to 4g get yourself an, uh, an unlimited data sim and buy either you can use it on your phone or you can use it in a MiFi device which is kind of like a what your own wireless access point with uh, a sim card slot and you can then actually use that. So 4G actually goes up to very, very high speeds. Some people can get 40, 50 megabits per second and 20 down, uh, 20 up and 40 down. That's a very, very good speed. And if you can't get that over broadband, I recommend you go and get that on 4G. Uh, then they, the plan's usually about 30 to 40 pounds a month for a SIM only uh, unlimited data. And that's really, really cool if you're getting speeds like that. I mean, that's comparable to similar broadband prices. Only this, you can kind of take wherever you want. So you actually get internet wherever you want and it's not locked down to just where you live. So that's something I would definitely recommend. Uh, obviously, that would, that would mean you had to change plans, but then it's possible, right? So I think that's about it, guys. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is with the switching over to the 4G is you wouldn't get a wired connection, which kind of defeats the purpose of what I said in the first and second uh, clips. So what I want to say is if you've got really, really fast, uh, slow internet, 
don't go on those websites that say download more bandwidth. That's not going to happen. That's not possible, guys. I'm really sorry to say that, but it's not. You can download more bandwidth, right? You're limited. Also, I want to say that ISPs are the biggest big dicks of the internet, basically. Um, all they've got to do to switch you, if you're on fiber and you're on like 100 megabit or 200 megabit connection, all they've got to do is press a button and input your new speed or just like move a slider. They don't have to physically do anything if you're already on fiber and they charge so much more. Uh, basically, it's the biggest business. Uh, BT in the UK actually owns so many different companies now just because they've acquired so much money from selling people like line rental and stuff and it's absolutely ridiculous. So hopefully that's helped you guys hopefully your internet's get a little bit faster you know the speed upload and download if not your network should definitely be faster overall if you're using the wired connection and a gigabit switch anyway guys thanks for watching uh again sorry about the audio visual quality i might have to redo this video not sure but yeah we'll see you in the next one peace